Without a doubt, one of the top requests among Baltoserians is how to set up light gun games in Baltosera. As most of you know, there are several light guns that you can purchase on the internet. Some are more complex to set up than others. Most are expensive to purchase. Fortunately, there's a rather cheap and easy solution so that you can play with light gun games within Batocera. Indeed, for less than $100, you can play light gun games for eight different systems or consoles in Batocera. In this two-part tutorial, you will learn how to configure and set it all up. Are you ready? Let's do it. Greetings everyone and welcome to Bata Nation. So delighted that you could join us here today. So finally, after all these months of people asking me, I finally got this tutorial for y'all, Light Gun Games. So first thing is first, let me go ahead and share with you the hardware or the equipment that you would need to get your Light Gun Games up and running. So, I got everything up through Amazon. This is the first thing you'll need. You'll need this Mad Flash wireless sensor adapter, okay? It's about $34, and I will be providing links to all this, so don't worry about it in my video description. You're also going to need a Wii Remote. You might have one already in your collection, but if you don't, you can purchase one at Amazon. Don't try to purchase any of the generic ones. It has to be a genuine Wii remote controller. Otherwise, they simply may not work effectively. And this is what I found also at Amazon. It's renewed. Uh, you're going to see in a few minutes, it was in really good shape. It's about $25. And then you also, finally, you're going to need a gun itself. This is the one I purchased also at Amazon for about $28, bucks, all right? So all this is for less than $100. This is the cheapest option uh, that you'll find to play light gun games in Batocera. And these come with a set of two as well. I also want to share with you this Wikipedia page, really good Wikipedia page, that tells you the list of light gun games that you will find in different systems, including RK, which is MAME, and you've got all these other ones as well. All right? It is quite extensive. It may not be a perfect list, but it's quite extensive. Most of the games for light guns, you'll find it in main. That's where you find the majority of light gun games, okay? But you also have other systems that also include light gun games. So among the ones I've got working were main, Naomi, Dreamcast, NES, Wii, Sega Saturn, Sega Model 2, and Sega Model 3. There were other consoles and systems I also tested that simply I could not get them up and running. Uh, sometimes because they know there was no option for light guns. And these include Atari, Super NES, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega 32X, PlayStation 1, and PlayStation 2. Those are the other ones I also tested, but again, I couldn't get it up and running. So my original plan was to cover this entire tutorial in one video. However, after I finished my, with my editing, it turns out it was over 45 minutes long, and I thought to myself, this is just way too long. So I've decided to cut this into two parts. So today, part one, I'm going to cover Systems Main, Naomi, Dreamcast, NES, and Sega Saturn. And then for part two, which should be followed three to four days later, I'm going to cover Sega Model 2, Sega Model 3, and the Wii system. Before I share with you the settings for the actual hardware, I also want to share with you uh, a new store we have at our website. And it turns out that in the last few weeks, the last few months, I've had a number of sponsors try to contact me to include their product uh, in my videos, and a lot of them just simply did not fit with Batocera, so I've actually turned them down. And I thought to myself, this is the best way we all can show your support. I'm not doing this full time. I still have my regular job. And I would need at least 100,000 subscribers before I could do this full time. So again, this is one of the best ways that you can support the channel. Uh, so if you click on the picture or the link itself, that will take you to this website at T Public, And I've got our own page here. And I've got a number of different designs, some with a logo and some without a logo. Okay, so it's up to you what you want. If you click on the last one here, for example, you see this, the t-shirt. But you also have other products that you also can purchase. Like hoodie, stickers, mugs, masks, cases for your phone, for your laptop, magnets, you name it. Okay? 
So again, best way to support this channel is by purchasing something. I really appreciate it. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the hardware itself and how to set it all up. All right, so here we have the main flash wireless adapter. You can see this connected to my Astrock mini computer through USB. It's very simple. And in the back here, you have an on and off switch. Go ahead and turn that on. All right, you can see the blue light is turned on. And you also have here a switch for top or bottom. That means that if you put this adapter on the top of your TV or the bottom of your TV, and I've experimented extensively with both. And I discovered that if you put it on the top, it works the best. If you put it on the bottom, some emulators may not work well. For example, the Sega Model 3 emulator, it simply does not work if you put this to the bottom of your TV. So it has to be put to the top. Best results, put it to the top. Plus, also, there was other games in the Naomi Dreamcast uh, emulators uh, that did not work if this was placed to the bottom. So, again, the best results, go ahead and put it to the top. It's very simple to switch to the top. All right. So, now let's go ahead and get the remote. This is the one I got from Amazon. You can see that it's in really good shape. There's no even no scratches. Looks really good. Go ahead and open it up. And you have the little button there, the red button. Go ahead and press that. That would sync to the Mayflash adapter. It's blinking there. And go ahead and press sync. And you can see there, it's synced. Okay. And that has to be set to light button one and four. One and four. And we also have here a mode. One, two, three, and four. You can see that. It's very simple to switch them. Make sure that this is set to two on all the emulators. With the exception of the Dolphin emulator or the Wii, you have to set this to mode four. Otherwise, it will not work. But everything else, set it to two. All right. And once you got that set up, you can go ahead and pick the little gun that I also got on Amazon. And go ahead. And go ahead and close it from the top. And you're ready to go. You're ready to go. All right. So let's go ahead and set it up in the emulators and we'll get this baby up and running. All right. So we're about to set it. Let's go ahead and press start on your game pad. And let's go to game collection settings. By the way, if you don't know about this, I would highly encourage you to check out my video, Advanced Features in Battle Center Volume 2. That explains this whole game collection settings, okay? So, let's go ahead and select that. And go into Automatic Game Collections. And somewhere around here, you should see something that says Light Gun Games, okay? Since I already selected it, it brings it up to the top right here, okay? And there it is. Go ahead and select that. And... And there it is. All right. You can see that we have here quite an extensive collection. Most of these are main. And not all of them are, in fact, light gun games. But there's a way to deselect them if you need to. Okay. There's also a way to add games from other emulators into this collection in case it did not find them successfully the first time. In fact, some of these I had to add in manually. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so for this particular game, let's say, for example, it's not a light gun game or you don't want this in your collection. So go ahead and press A on your game pad and go into edit this game's metadata. From there, go up and just go ahead and select hidden and automatically will get rid of it from there. All right. And then, of course, select yes. All right, and it's gone. Let's say, for example, there's a game uh, that's not in here, and it's one of the other emulators. So you can go ahead and add it manually as well. So, for example, let's go to Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, right there. And I've got this game right here, Duck Hunt, that has not been added automatically into the Light Gum Collections. So go ahead, press the A button also, and go into Edit This Game's Metadata, and go up and go to genres select that and then go up and go to light gun shooters select that back it save it now let's go ahead and go back let's go back to the light gun games from there go ahead press start and gamepad 
game settings, update games list, and there it is. Okay, so that's how you manually add games into this collection. Before we select the actual games, let me share with you that on the Wii Mote, you can use the D-pad to go up and down. See that? that I'm doing that through my D-pad on my Wii Mote, okay? The plus sign will actually will select the game itself. Now for the minus sign, if you are in the game itself and you press that button, it will automatically will exit the game. Sometimes the A button will also work as well, all right? Let's proceed. So let's start off with MAME. MAME is probably, again, the collection has most amount of gun games. Unfortunately for us, Batuset has all this pre-configured already for us. We don't have to mess around with any of the settings. It just works. It's so awesome about it. So let's go ahead and try it out. Now suppose you want to change some of the settings. You need to change some of the light gun settings. There's a way to do that. Go ahead, hit the L3 button on your gamepad. That brings up this main menu right here. And from here, you can go into input this game, hit the B button, and from there you can choose whatever you need to change, okay? And then once you're done, press the B button and uh, the L3 button, or you can just go to return to game. Now, suppose the L3 button doesn't work, you don't see that main menu. Then go ahead, press the hotkey and the A button, Go up, go into Options, go into System, go into Display Main Menu, turn it on, and then when you resume, you'll see it right there. Okay? You can do it from there as well. And then make sure, of course, turn it off after you've finished. Hotkey and the A button, go back up, Options, System, and turn it off right there. And that's it. Let's go ahead and resume gameplay. You see there, it worked quite well. Now let's go into the Sega Saturn. And let's go into settings itself. So go ahead, hold down the A button. And let's go into advanced game options. And the emulator you want is uh, the Libretto Beetle Saturn. In fact, for all the other emulators, we're going to use RetroArch because it makes it so much easier. But for this particular console, we're going to use the Beetle Saturn one. All right, let's go ahead and select that. And from there, I just have this the way I would normally have it for the emulator itself. Decoration, I've got the bezel project. All right, let's go ahead and go ahead and select it. Hotkey, A button, and that takes us to the quick menu settings, okay, retro arch. So go up and go into controls, go into port one controls. And right here, device type, make sure you choose virtual gun right there. All right. And it has to be mapped to port number one. All right. And get out of that. Port number two. Go into port number two. Go ahead and make sure it's on control pad. Okay. This way you can control it with your game pad as well. You're going to need both of them to get these light gun games up and running. So go ahead and just make sure it's on control pad. And once that's been done, go ahead and select this. 
save game remap file make sure you select that one and not the core you don't want to do this for the whole thing just for the actual game itself and it's save right there okay all right and from there you can go up to options and from there you can go into input and from there you can choose how you want it cross dot off and of course game input make sure it's like the delight gun all right if you make any changes here, you're going to have to go up here, Manage Core Options, and go ahead and select Save Game Options. All right? And that's it. Now we can go ahead and resume playing. All right, so we got that one up and running. Now let's go into the Dreamcast. Hold down the A button, go into Advanced Game Options, go into Emulator, make sure you set it to Liberto Flagcast. All right. And from there, you can choose your different uh, options you want. All right. Controller type, make sure you choose light gun. You can also do this to the retro arch menu as well. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and select it. Hold on the hockey and A button, and that brings us to the retro arch menu. Once again, let's go into controls. I'll go into port one controls. And once again, make sure it's selected to light gun. Okay. And port one. Port two, again, you're going to need a controller. This is to select the start game on your game pad to get the game up and running. You don't have to worry about none of these settings right here. All right. Let's go now into options. And from there, go here to the bottom. Show light gun settings. Make sure it's selected to on. And from there, you can go to gun crosshair display. You can choose the color of your crosshair. I've noticed that white probably works best since the crosshair is really small and there's no way to fix that. I wish there could be a way you can make it bigger, but you can't. So uh, you have different options, but again, I think the best option is white. Select that. And then from there, go up, back to the top, go into manage core options. And go into save game options, all right? All right, so we're done and we're ready to play the game. Remember, you're going to need your game pad to go ahead and select the start for it to work properly. And once you have it up and running, then you can use a light gun to, to play the game itself, all right?
right, so we got that game up and running. Let's go to a Naomi game. Same process. Hold down the A button. Go into Advanced Game Options. Auto. Go ahead and choose Liberto Flycast. Same thing here with all these options. The same thing you normally do. And again, you can either choose. You can use Live Gun or go into the Retro Arch menu as well. All right. Let's go ahead and select it. You also need your gamepad to get the game up and running, all right? All right, hotkey A button, go back up, go into controls, go into port one controls. Once again, this has to be selected to light gun. Port two to the controller. Go into options. And once again from here, you can choose show light gun settings, turn it on. Go into crosshair display. You can choose the color you want. Again, I think white probably is the best option. And from there, go into manage core options and save it. All right, it's done. If you have to change them later on, make sure you delete it first and then make your changes and then save it as well. All right, let's go into the game itself. Try it out. Alright, so we got the game up and running. Let's go ahead and now go into Duck Hunt NES. Alright, so once again, press the A button, hold down the A button on the gamepad. Go into uh, Advanced Game Options. And for Emulator, it appears that both of them work, but it turns out among the two, the best one is actually Nystopia. Gives you the best option in terms of the aiming and shooting. So go ahead and select that one. And from there, you can choose whatever options you want, okay? That's the way I have it. It's up to you how you want to set it up. All right. So let's go ahead and select the game. All right. Hockey A button. Let's go to the bottom. Let's go into controls. This one's a little bit different. Port 1 controls has to be in the gamepad itself. All right. Uh, port 2 controls. That's what you got to choose. That's a zapper. All right. Make sure it's map port 2. That's the way it works. In fact, in the original system, you had to put the gun on the port number two, the actual system itself. That's why it has to be this way. All right, from there, make sure you choose Save Game Remap File. Make sure you always do that for every single game you have a light gun. Save it. All right, let's go ahead and go out of there and let's go into Options. Uh, let's go to the bottom. And then Crosshair, make sure it's on. Zapper device. The default is mouse. If you choose light gun, it will not work. In fact, in the other emulator, uh, you also have the same option light gun, it will not work. But in this emulator, it turns out you also have an extra option that's pointer. Mouse would be very jittery. The light gun would be very jittery, so you don't want to choose that. Go ahead and choose pointer. All right. Now that's been chosen to pointer. Go back to the top. Manage core options. Save game options. Make sure you also always do that every time you change any of the options on the actual game itself. It's saved. Now we can go ahead and play the game.
All right, so that's how the NEA system is done. And that should bring us to a conclusion for part one. Again, part two will follow three to four days later. And I'm going to cover Sega Model 2, Sega Model 3, and the Wii system. So stay tuned for part two. Okay, so that is a wrap. I got to tell you, of everything I've tested out on the Mato set, this is one of the things I really enjoyed. This was a lot of fun. I had so much fun that I got carried away testing everything out, playing with these games. It's a lot of fun. And it's probably one of the cheapest options you have for light gun games. There are other options out there, but they're more expensive. Uh, in fact, one of my songs for 250 bucks. that's a lot of money uh, to have this all set up. This was under $100 to set it all up. Uh, so again, try it with the Wiimote and uh, one of those plastic guns you can find on Amazon. Uh, and I will provide links on the video description. Uh, and you can get this baby up and running for eight systems altogether. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like it. That would really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. If this is your first time watching About to Set a Nation, I would highly encourage you to check out our website at aboutthesetanation.com. That would give you a great overview of what About to Set is all about and whether this will fit your emulation needs. In any case, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time on About to Set a Nation. Bye.